Good evening and welcome. You're watching NDTV. That's our big focus. Those are our big headlines. Let's get down to our top story right away. Muslims should be treated as our own. No insult should be meted out towards them. Muslims should not be treated as a vote bank, has said the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, while addressing the concluding session of the BJP conclave in Koekord in the presence of top brass party leaders and party cadre at the BJP's national executive meet. Take a look. पंडित दीनदयाल उपाध्याय जी ने कहा था मुसलमानों को न पुरस्कृत करें और न ही उनको तिरस्कृत करें बल्कि उनका परिष्कार करें मुसलमानों को न वोट की मंडी का माल और नहीं कोई घृणा की वस्तु समझे उसे अपना समझे All right, to, uh, to discuss this further in our studios, we have uh, Nija Chaudhary, senior co columnist and analyst. We have uh, Shahid Siddiqui joining us. He's the editor of Nai Dunya. We'll have uh, Priyanka Chaturvedi, spokesperson of the Congress, and again in studio here from the BJP. We have uh, Shaina NC. Nija, let me go across to you first. No insult uh, should be meted out to, to Muslims. They are our own. To most Indians, that would be obvious, as obvious as the sky is blue. So, who, whom is this statement addressed to? Do you think? I think the Prime Minister was reiterating his "sabka saath, sabka vikas," inclusive Which again he said development. Today. He repeatedly said, and it's very significant that his statement comes post Uri, post the challenges Uri face, uh, poses for India, both in the strategic global community. Uh, also in Kashmir, you, that we have to reach out to the valley in a new way. Uh, and therefore, the Prime Minister sees this opportunity of the BJP conclave to spell out very, very clearly. He talked mus about Muslims not being a vote bank, being ours. He used the opportunity of citing what uh, Dindya Lupadhyay had said. Therefore, he was trying to give a very clear message that BJP is for inclusive growth. This he has spoken of in the past also. Correct. But the way he spoke of it today was much more clear and, um, you know, uh, targeting or reassuring, trying to reassure uh, the minority community. And I think it's quite significant the timing of it. Mm -hmm. Why do you say that? Because uh, you see, yesterday when he spoke in Kozikod, he talked about, I mean, he, you see, he has uh, post Uri, he's got to contend with a very agitated, seething anger in the country that enough is enough. Correct. He struck that note, but we cannot go to war, that's clear. And the Prime Minister, I mean, apart from saying that we will not allow these sacrifices to go in vain, he said, and we will do what we have to, he talked about a war against poverty, which is the right thing, you know, long term, that Pakistan should also fight, reaching out to the awam of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. You ask of your leaders, what kind of a country are they creating for you? Uh, but he has to contend with that anger, particularly in the hardcore supporters of the, of the party. And therefore, uh, it's a the timing of it is an elections are com coming of in course, UP, UP and so the domestic politics they've played the card of nationalism they've said it's our agenda it's our ide identity all this has been said in the past therefore he's got to do a very tight rope walk and so if what he said yesterday would not be music to the ears of war mongers again today he's speaking to uh, the right wing maybe no, let's let's go across the side it was hard it was very hard hitting against Pakistan but in rhetoric correct and what Shahid Siddiqui, oh, who do you think the statement was addressed to? And the fact that he referenced uh, uh, Mr. Dinya Lopade, that would reach out or be most meaningful to the right wing of the BJP? No, he spoke like the leader of a great nation. He spoke that like a, somebody who has arrived in history, who, who, has, who is making history. And he... Is, he, he made it very clear that India will develop when it takes everybody together. It was a message more to those who are talking in the language of jingoism, in the language of hate. It was a clear message to them that, look, it's not just Narendra Modi who is saying that Muslims have to be taken. They are part of this nation, part of the growth story. It is the ideology of 
BJP and Jansang. It is the ideology of uh, Dindyal Upadhyay. So we have to carry, carry this ideology. That was the clear message uh, to, to his own workers and to the people and to the minorities. And, and also to, to Pakistan. That look, India is a secular country where minorities are safe. Minorities are secure. His, he spoke of socialism. He spoke of the poor. He spoke of the environment. He spoke of the uh, global warming because he was speaking in Kerala. In Kerala, these issues are extremely important. So he, he spoke like a statesman, a great leader, not, not just a leader of the BJP. He so spoke again, like the timing, leader of India. Again, timing of important this great coming a day after yes. that speech where you said there was a, a high on rhetoric against yes. Pakistan. Let's go across to Priyanka Chaturvedi. Uh, Priyanka, is this, does this represent a turning point for the BJP? We've, we're seeing the PM here. Is it an attempt from, for him to distance himself from some statements that we've heard from other members of the BJP, from other groups that are affiliated to, uh, to them? No, uh, so I'd like to mention a couple of things listening to what Shahid Ji was saying while due respect to what Shahid Ji was saying about him speaking like a great leader and a, a brilliant statesman, etc. I just like to say something. When you speak about Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas, that was the dream that he sold during his 2014 campaign. Why is it that the Prime Minister has to keep reiterating that to people in the BJP about treating the minorities equally? Why is it that this message needs to be told time and time again? Simply because the words do not follow up with actions. As far as the, their track record is concerned in the past two and a half years, we have seen enough and more protests uh, arising out of college campuses, uh, whether it's UNA in Gujarat, whether it is in Uttar Pradesh, communal riots in Uttar Pradesh. So they themselves are an indicator as to what they do on ground and what is being spoken. So having said that, while everyone appreciates his words, we always we have been maintaining this, that his words are very different from the action that follows within the Bharti Janta Party and, and keeping the political party aside, even in the government of the day. So actions and words do not match up. And that is why perhaps the Prime Minister needs to keep reiterating this entire uh, statement again and again, yet we do not see China, any changes China, let's ask uh, in that. terms the, of the way making minorities is... feel at comfort. The, the way it was phrased also, Muslims are one of our own, is, is that insulting or the fact that it had to be said at the BJP National Executive on at their conclave, would one say this about Jens Six, for example? Look at the history of India. For 60 years, you've had political parties that have only played vote bank politics with the Muslims. They have kept them economically downward, never allowed them to go beyond a point because they wanted them as a secure vote bank. Here you have a statesman who goes down in the history of India as somebody who is not being a mere politician who's thinking of the next election. Like a statesman, he's thinking of the next generation. And the current scenario where you have these terror terrorists who are trying to destabilize a strong country, a diverse country like India, what is he doing? He is leveling a sense of security to every Indian not a Hindu or a Muslim. And whilst he says that, he talks about uh, economic development, he talks about uh, so many things. Yesterday's statement where he says that, you know, at a, a country like Pakistan that got freedom with us and is only exporting terror whilst we are exporting uh, software, it speaks a lot about the vision for a country where every Indian is a part of this great process. And when he talks about uh, Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay, I think it's imperative to understand there is an ideology that guides the BJP, which is justice to all and appeasement to none, reiterating that, making the Muslims of this country feel secure, and at the same time saying that your development and is the, the development of this country. And the fact that you have the, uh, Mayavati not breathing down the BJP's neck well, with that, the UP that, elections, that, what role does that play That in may this? be your way of assessing it or viewing it. For me, I think his his speech yesterday, his speech today is that of a statesman. It's all encompassing. Uh, which leader has spoken about everything from terrorism to climate change to the youth of this country to the actual insecurity of terror and the Electoral repercussions reforms. of terror? Reforms. It's. I think uh, the list is endless. And if you really go to analyze bit by bit what was said yesterday and what was said today, 
it is not against the people of pakistan it is against terror and the terror hub in pakistan i think that's a very big take away from somebody who is not just a statesman of our country but is being viewed as a global leader today priyanka uh, the statement about uh, the bjp is often a question the congress about playing vote bank politics do you think this again a dig at the congress today no this is something that uh, mr modi has been going on talking about and the you know his history in itself is also indicative enough as to what his role and responsibilities have been in assuring that minorities feel safe in the country in the past 2 years we have seen enough and more uh, reasons to uh, you know disbelieve his words like i said his actions haven't followed it up it's good to speak like a statesman it would be even better if he behaves like a statesman and his government does so too so having uh, said that i would just like to uh, remind shaina ji that while she speaks about taking everyone along and uh, you know uh, talking about equal opportunities justice to all etc it all sounds good but probably if you look at what happened to mohammad aklaq and what happened after that and the statements that came from every single bharti janta party leader defending it just goes on to show that like i said earlier actions and words do not match up and again i'd like to say this while she keeps talking about how he attacked terrorism linking it to one particular religious group is also something that comes across when you when you when you when, when he makes these statements so this is something which also like you uh, initially asked you said why not jains why not sikhs why is he only uh, speaking about the muslims so that is also a question that uh, uh, the bharti janta party needs to introspect on china let me let's go across to you now so on one hand you have the pm saying they should not play vote bank politics muslims should not be treated as a vote bank but on the other hand in haryana we are saying that you know scriptures uh, hindu scripture should be taught in government schools that should be compulsory we have the akali which is an ally of the bjp which openly says it's working for one community i think the haryana government invited uh, jain muni tarun sagar to the assembly so if you're not going to play vote bank politics shouldn't it be for no. all religions why only for for muslims then i think that's a very unfair assessment look why? at a country like india where you have so many various religious heads that are participative uh, and reaching out to public at large at this juncture where you have an attack where you have uh, terrorists who have on television confessed about the kind of terror homegrown terror in pakistan and where they have one agenda to destabilize india the prime minister could have just completely ignored it he has chosen to tell the people living in india and especially the muslims as a minority that you are safe you are secure we are with you and we are all one strong nation it reiterates a state of in, uh, a sense of unitedness and i think for those who are trying to constantly suggest that oh is he reaching out please don't forget in 2014 the kind of mandate that prime minister narendra modi got every segment of society including the muslims were voting him in and had voted him in so i don't think that we need a certificate from a community or a religious sect or an ideology we need to reiterate that this government is for the poorest of poor for the weakest of weak for the minorities and for the economically deprived and all that his agenda has been if you hear his speech yesterday and today from the beginning to the end is to ensure that yes we have the political will to deliver but we are going to stand united as one nation and not bother about which community or which ideology we belong to all right uh, thanks so much let's need it you have something to say and no i i it's very interesting that uh, uh, can i come shana, in uh, we'll just come one, to mr sindhi give you the last word take off from what shahid had uh, said that uh, you see the cow if there's one issue that's created a sense of insecurity amongst the muslims in the last two years the cow is, is the cow vigilantism and that's included in kashmir and again today we've had an episode in gujarat and that's absolutely a pregnant woman and th- therefore there's a sense of let's be honest there's a sense of insecurity amongst the Correct. muslims is the prime minister actually with the statement today i'm only asking a question reaching out to his hard core the cow vigilante types to say that inclusiveness and that muslims are ours the way he put it was given by mr din dayal upadhyay therefore is very much part of our thinking system our value system it hasn't been in action but is he reaching out to those people hold your horses i think the coming weeks and months will tell us more about this but i just you know i'm taking off from what shahid uh, one of the statements he mr. made mr siddiqui we are completely out of time so i'm going to give you the last word please uh, quickly go ahead 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, number one, I, I agree that we, we should not only talk about Muslim vote bank and nobody should treat anybody as a vote bank. Hindus should also not be treated as vote bank where BJP has done it time and again. They have treated Hindus as a vote bank, one. But secondly, I think it is extremely important that this kind of statement should come from the Prime Minister at this juncture. And, and I remember Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru after 1947 time and again made this statement, made Muslims feel that this is their country and anybody you, who, who questions their loyalty the is, will not and be tolerated. And, and, and so, so it is not... Muslims are feeling so, that time. Let, to what let the me, present let me, let situation me is, so, sir, please. So it is, there's it a is, huge it is not, it is not There's nothing wrong in doing that. I mean, Request. let's not do no, politics sir, on this. Let, let's fe, let's At that face the reality. And the reality is... And the reality and Muslims is, were reality is, and no, and I have very country. little time. Oh, all right, actually, we no, no, are no, no. completely today, out of today, time. Today, <laughs> today, also they are unsafe. <laughs> we today, also they are unsafe. Is they have been unsafe for the last 70 years. Say, there I have been more riots in the Congress. That's a good question to end on, Mr. Siddiqui. Unfortunately, we are completely out of time. We have to go in for a short break. But thank you to all our guests for joining us today, the speaker Sunday.